I'm Gene Bicknell, and I appreciate you all being here this morning. I plan to make a few prepared remarks, and then I'll open it up to questions. After 14 years of battling the courts in Kansas, I'm breaking my silence. My attorneys do not know what I'm about to say and are not involved in this. This is very personal. For more than a decade, I've allowed my attorneys to handle everything. But after receiving a negative decision from the appellant court over the case that I won in Crawford County Court, we repealed it by a two to one margin. As you can imagine, I've got a few things to say. I'll start from the first. I decided to retire in 2002. It was time for me to do that since I'd had a job since I was 11 years old. I turned over my chief executive role to my chief operating officer and since I was retiring. So I retired in Florida, which I'd bought my retirement house in 1990. I filed my taxes in every state that I had to file taxes in. I filed my taxes in 2003 in the state of Kansas as a non-resident, and they accepted it. I filed my taxes also in 2004, and Kansas accepted it as a non-resident. In 2005, again, I filed as a non-resident, and they accepted it. And then in 2006, I filed as a non-resident, and ironically, that happened to be the year that I sold my business. Now, I retired in Florida, covered my taxes, the state of Kansas said, except the fact that I was a Florida resident. But then, when 2007 came along, my 2006 filing as a non-resident became an issue because in 2007, uh, the state of Kansas also decided that I wasn't a resident of Florida. I was a resident of Kansas. And I'd already established my residency in Florida, and I'd also homesteaded in Florida. And I had a bank account there since, I was 19, in, since 1990 when I bought my house. So their claim that I'm a Kansas resident is not right. It's just wrong. They challenged my residence and they tried to place the burden of proof on me after they decided that they wanted to change their mind. And the burden of proof should not be on me as the Kansas courts have insisted. It's the burden of proof should be on the state of Kansas. This case should have never gotten to court. This is when the extortion began. After a new trial that I had gotten in Crawford County, we had won that. And the state appealed that to the appellant court. Now I want to review, this is a decision two to one. The chief just judge was in our favor. The other two appellant judges who were on that case, Judges Henry Green, Green Jr., appointed by Joan Finney to the appellant's court, and Anthony Powell, who was appointed by Sam Brownback. Well, Anthony Powell and Sam Brownback were good friends, so Brownback appointed him to the Court of Appeals, appointed him to it. Now, that appointment was right before this startup. Now, what's interesting is the fact that my biggest opponent in this whole situation has been Sam Brownback. And Sam, Brand Sam Brownback uh, tried to uh, keep me from having to return my taxes. And he even tried to slip through and, and, and uh, 
a P or a, and uh, uh, and he tried to uh, uh, cancel my ability to protect myself and defend myself in this case. So why would Sam Brownback not want the state to give me my money back? Well, basically, it's because when I when I had that kangaroo court on the first trial from a court that I'll cover later, I had to appeal it because the first court was not a real court, it was a kangaroo court. And it was a rubber stamp for the Court of Appeal, or for the uh, Department of Revenue. So when, uh, when I filed that report and Sal Brambach didn't want me to get give the money back to Kansas. And he even tried to slip that appeal through at the late last moment of legislature, but thank God the Kansas legislature overrode his appeal by a large margin. So therefore, that put it back. And, then, and when I filed those taxes for the appeal, I mean, that money for the appeal, uh, that, uh, that was filed under protest. And those funds should have gone into escrow and be drawing interest. But why did Sam Brownback not want to pay that money back to me? I'll tell you why, because he spent it. He spent that money to balance the budget in a state that he had taken away their economic value by uh, not replacing the revenue that he, that he eliminated in taxes. So. Those two appellant judges said that my witnesses were jaded, even though they're upstanding, strong citizens. But these two judges, Green and Powell, they inferred that the Crawford County Courts were not able to conduct a fair trial, that they were inferior to other courts in Kansas, even though all the judges in Crawford County had to recuse themselves. The Supreme Court had appointed a, a, a respected district senior court judge from another county called Judge Smith, Richard Smith, to rule over our trial in Crawford County. He was from another county and not uh, connected to the Crawford judges. Those two appeal court judges overturned his thoughtful and serious decision, uh, which highly in favor of us. So therefore, they insulted Crawford County. Whoop. They insulted Crawford County. They insulted Judge Smith, claiming he wasn't a legitimate ruler. Sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. Mic drop. <laughs> so they also insulted Judge Smith, who's a very, a very renowned judge. And they said he couldn't make a fair decision. They also inferred that the Supreme Court wasn't capable of appointing a judge capable of judging. The two appeals court judges said that my witnesses, who are thoroughly competent and high character, are not acceptable to make an honest suggestion. They said Gene Bicknell has an advantage in Crawford County, but they don't say how. They want to move for another trial in Shawnee County, where the state has an advantage, they hope that they'll get a judge that will join them in this extortion. We had two trials, and there's no new evidence. There's no reason for another trial, plus the fact that I don't know if I'd live through another trial, especially if I had to go to Topeka. Is there politics involved? Well, I'll let you be the judge. Forgive me for being jaded, but my late wife and I endured 14 years of harassment from the Department of Revenue, which included almost 500 interrogatories. They made our barn cat famous. When time was precious and fleeting from us, my Rita passed last year. She had had uh, cancer twice, and I'll get into that later. But we were consumed by responding to a barrage of ridiculous and illogical questions. They questioned us about our barn cat, our dog. That was highly interesting to them. They counted the days I was allegedly in Kansas when in fact I was in Branson, Missouri or Phoenix, Arizona. Like my dad used to say, figures don't lie, but liars can figure. While enduring this harassment, 
Rita suffered the stress and anxiety of this nightmare in the final days of her life. She had a cancer diagnosed, and first, diagnosed first in 2002 and early 2003 when I retired to Florida. She underwent two years of treatment after major surgery and was treated at the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. She went through two surgeries as the first one didn't get all of the cancer. Then when she was diagnosed with lung cancer a few years ago, which caused her death last April after two and a half years of suffering, my wife Rita never saw the end of this extortion. Now they want an old man well into his 80s who had a near-death lung disease three years ago. And I had COVID in November and I'm, that was nearly fatal and I'm suffering now from post-COVID syndromes. For me to go to Topeka and stay in a hotel and find a way to get to and back to, to a courtroom in my physical condition alone with no one to care for me would be very hard. In Crawford County, at least my kids are, live close enough by that they can help take care of me. I believe this happens to be cruel. As a matter of fact, I know it's cruel. I feel that any company looking to Kansas should know that all the courts and the Department of Revenue will use any and all the methods to extract money from a state that Brownback broke by repealing taxes and not replacing them. They had to use my bond appeal money to, to balance the state's budget. So instead of being in escrow drawing money, they spent it. They spent my money. I paid taxes and penalties under protest when this happened. And that money should have gone into escrow, but Kansas spent my money. The insults and harassment that I've endured and we've endured over the last 14 years were certainly unfair. The case should never have been tried. Now let me say this loud and clear. I am not a resident of Kansas. I was not a resident of Kansas in 2006. If that's not clear enough, I don't know how else to say it. I met every requirement to be a resident of Florida, and I also homesteaded there after 2004. There's also a constitutional issue from the beginning, and my civil rights have been trampled. A ruling by the constitutionality would have prevented us from ever going to a court, but no one would address it. For 14 years and many hours of horror, it seems destined to keep this thing alive until I die. That seems to be their mission. So gestion, justice to me in Kansas is questionable. They insinuated in 2007 that I filed as a resident of Florida and should be considered, and if that were true, then I would have been evading taxes or big tax evasion in those earlier years, three, four, and five, and six. So that disputes the fact that I paid taxes when I lived in Kansas, but I'm not taxable after I move out of Kansas. They also didn't understand the fact that I paid taxes every year in Kansas, but they're calling me a liar. And that I was entitled, was, I, that I was entitled to move out of Kansas is my business, and I could do that. Bad lungs and health issues were good reasons for living your life, and that might happen to be better off in a warmer climate. They say I have to live my life in Kansas or be challenged by the state of Kansas. If state accomplishes this, they'll make me a criminal because I am a homesteader in Florida and that would be illegal if I was not a resident of Florida. So in 2006, the legislature passed some new rules on, on moving out of the state. They included abandonment and intent. And then they included me in that charge, and I'm a resident of Florida at the time. The state failed to tell the people of Kansas about them changing the rules. I think in the law it says something like informing the classes. I'm not a lawyer, but that terminology comes to mind. And they led a kangaroo court, not a real court, mind you, to try me. It was a court of tax appeals. It was a committee of people who didn't really know the law and they were rubber stamping the Department of Revenue's intentions. And then they were overturned by our appeal and one judge in that court was a CPA and the other two were new, new judges. Are you exhausted with the story yet? Well, how do, what do you think about living it for 14 years? 
And we finally got a fair trial by a revered judge appointed by the Supreme Court who gave an indisputable decision. Now the two judges on the appellate court have sent us right back to square one. Not on the merits of the case, but on being in Crawford County and several other illogical opinions. There is no new evidence. It's been tried twice in court. We spent days after days after days, long hours, for trials that meant nothing because the state of Kansas wasn't going to turn loose the money if they didn't have to. Obviously, they've been able to hold it off for 14 years. They claim that the outcome was biased because of, where the trial, because of where the trial was held. When all the judges in Crawford County recused themselves from the state, is there politics in the legal system in Kansas? Well, in Kansas courts, are they wanting to protect the state, not the law? It pains me more than I can express to you today that Rita didn't get a chance to see the end of this nightmare for 14 years. I've been a resident in the home center in Florida since 2003 and deserve to live my final years without stress and anger. I want to thank you for listening to my rant, but it was 14 years in the making. So I'll answer any questions you might have. Yes, ma'am. What do you think? What do you think would be the most fair resolution at this point that you think could happen? I, I couldn't hear. So do you think the fair resolution would be hmm? a fair resolution? What do you think that would be? What would be a fair resolution at this point? On, say it again. What would be a fair resolution at this point in time? Yes. Yes. What would be a fair resolution in what, your opinion? What was my intention? Or, what would be a fair resolution in your opinion? Oh, fair point? resolution. Thank you. That's a good question. Uh, a fair resolution would be justice uh, ruling on the facts, not on opinions. Um, what would be fair, you, you might ask me where I'm going to go next. Frankly, I know I can't go back to the Court of Appeals. And it's up to the Supreme Court of Kansas. I'm going to have to talk to my lawyers about this because I've kept them out of this. So I'll have a discussion with them about what we can do going forward. Uh, but I don't have a whole lot of faith right now in the, in the Kansas courts. And uh, I, I think that my civil rights are at stake. I think that uh, if I could possibly uh, get a ruling on the constitutionality, if I could get uh, if I could get a, a a court that wasn't biased, uh, if I could get someone that wasn't trying to to uh, uh, extort me, uh, then that would be a good resolution. Follow up. How much money do you think they would be giving you? Because we're talking about more than one different number, it sounds like. Well, it's, it's a big number. Um, and it's a big number because it's gone on 14 years, and there's been a lot of interest. And of course, the state of Kansas wasn't hesitant to add penalties too. And you know, I tried to talk to the present governor uh, uh, Kelly, and she wouldn't meet with me. I tried to talk to former governors, and they didn't want to talk about it. The Department of Revenue is controlling the issue, and so. It, I don't really have a very strong platform uh, to state my case except this way. And if I have to go back to court, I mean, that just really doesn't make any sense. So the number is big. I admit that. I don't even remember what the number is because I'm not dealing in numbers here. I'm dealing in justice. And I don't expect it. I don't expect to, to sit around and talk about, uh, you know, what money means, I intend, I'm here to talk about what justice is and the importance of, to the Kansas people and the other people that may be faced with the same problems I'm going through in the future. And so what I'm trying to do is set the stage for fairness in Kansas. And if you want to be fair and you want to follow the law, I'm right on board. 
but I can't find any fairness here, and I can't find any laws that tells me that I'm a resident of the state of Kansas, and even by their own admission. So my feeling is, is that uh, if they're trying to get it back in court again, all they're trying to do is maybe get a new judge that'll agree with them. And quite frankly, Judge Smith gave a 50-page decision that was very descriptive, covered all the issues, and when this ruling came down by the appellate court, they didn't even talk about me being a resident of Kansas or not. It, it was an issue of whether it should be in Crawford County. It was an issue of Judge Smith was jaded. It was a question about uh, the judges of Crawford County and, and the fact that uh, the, the Department of Revenue is not giving up. I don't know, you know, right from the beginning, uh, we had a hearing on this, and Governor Kathleen Sebelius in 2006 told her Department of Revenue Director, Joan Wagner, to go out and find money from the people who left Kansas. Well, she ran a list, and I came out the top of that list, so they singled me out. And Joan Wagner even admitted to me in that hearing that it was all about money. And when we had our first kangaroo court at the end, the Department of Revenue admitted that it's all about money. So this is just an issue where the Kansas is broke, or have broken by Brownback, and they're short on money. So what they want to do is they want, they want to use mine. And the money is not the issue here. The issue is what's fair and what's just. And I can tell you right now that I will not quit fighting this. I'll fight it to the last breath of my life because I believe in what's right and I believe in justice. And I can tell you that I've been a good citizen. I've served the state on several committees appointed by different governors. I've served my country in the military. I have been a good citizen and I can, I can now be very comfortable at the end of my life because I have been honest and I have been fair and I've been charitable and I'll continue to, to be charitable and care about those in need. So this is biased. Uh, Governor Sebelius started it. Sound Brownback was my biggest opponent. And Sound Brand, Sound, Sam Brownback used my money. Uh, and he doesn't want that to come to light and make the state have to give it back because instead of being an escrow, it happens to be gone. He spent it. So there's, this is so confusing uh, to, to carry something for 14 years and, and, and not find some kind of an end to it, but I will tell you one thing. This is gonna make a very good movie. So, we're, uh, they insinuated that, that I lied, and they challenged my integrity, they challenged my character, and they, 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 they challenged, you know, one thing about me, my spirituality, my faith, and my integrity are important to me. So that makes this personal. And so that's why I'm doing this personally rather than going through the courts. I don't know where I can go to find a fair court. My lawyers are trying to be defensive and they're good lawyers. I'm not, you know, I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just telling you that I'm kind of lost in the middle of the stream here without a paddle. And uh, I, I've done a lot for the state of Kansas. I've, I've, made, I've worked for the state of Kansas. I was one of the biggest supporters of the state of Kansas. And I still love the people of Kansas. I don't have anything against Kansas. I just don't want to live here. I like to come back and see my family. I like to come back and see my friends. I love the city of Pittsburgh. I feel such a strong part of the city of Pittsburgh. And I'm so proud of Crawford County of what it is and what it actually exists as a, as, a, as a beacon in the light. 
And for them to condemn Crawford County Courts, and for them to condemn Judge Smith, and for them to condemn the characters of my witnesses, uh, that is just not right. Those are fighting words. I, I, I was born in poverty in, in a little town called Pittsburgh, Oklahoma. And if you wanted anything, you worked for it. If you couldn't walk down the street and whip every kid on the street, you couldn't walk down the street. So I know a little bit about fighting, and I intend to continue that fight now against the state of Kansas. And if it goes beyond and, and I lose this case, I won't be done then. I'll, go, I'll carry it even further. The state of Kansas has a, a decision to make. First of all, they need to decide just exactly what people are going to think about this state and companies looking into it for economic development. And I've worked for the state of Kansas on economic development, trying to get other companies to come in here. And I hate to tell them what to expect from the Department of Revenue. Uh, I'm Mitch James, my dad, for the record. What do you intend to do with that money if you win it back? About what? If you win this case, I want people to know what you're going to do with that money. <laughs> well. If they didn't think it's going to your pocket. Okay, good, good question. Thank you. Um, I think if you look at my record, if you look at my MO, charity is a big part of it. Our family has a charitable foundation. And you know what the name of that foundation is? It's 1248. That's from Luke. Luke 12:48 says, to those that much are given, much is expected. That's our foundation. I have another quotient, a quote, verse, Bible verse, and that comes from Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15. If you don't forgive, you can't be forgiven. So I'm not going to carry a grudge. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to keep fighting. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm Jim Hall. I'm the attorney for Any other questions? Um, in, uh, in the ruling, uh, it has some quotes in there. It says, uh, that you were making the argument that uh, you had to sever ties to Crawford County, um, and it has a quote in there, uh, you had to choose between potential tax liability and time with your grandchildren. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not coming it, back. There was a, it said that you had to choose between ta uh, potential tax liability and time with your grandchildren in Crawford County, um, but then the ruling also said that you weren't restricted from visiting Crawford County. So while you're here in town, are you going to be visiting family, visiting your grandchildren? Yeah, I, I always like to see my kids and grandkids and my relatives and, and uh, my friends. I've got, I got a lot of friends in, in Pittsburgh and Kansas, and I have friends, I have friends that I've worked with in the legislature for the last 40 years in Kansas, helping Kansas. And, Worked for the legislature. I ran for governor a couple of times, got beat. But uh, no, I, uh, I, my family is very dear to me. This community is very dear to me. The courts of Kansas are not very, <laughs> are not, not very nice to me. So, yes, I, I'm definitely a family man. Uh, I've got uh, 38 grandchildren, and I've had five children, lost one, but. Uh, Twenty of those grandchildren are great. <laughs> so, that's your thank you. <coughs> Anybody else? Anybody want to sing? <laughs> Steve wants to dance. Well, I think that might wrap things up. Uh, we're going to get you some one-on-ones with some media okay. uh, after this. So appreciate everybody coming out and uh, enjoy the sunshine because apparently we have a freeze warning tonight. So stay warm. Yeah, thanks a lot, folks. I really appreciate it. Sorry to rant and rave, but I'm a little bit angry. As my friend from North Ireland.